Hi everybody, Peter Diamandis here. This is the third video in a sequence of videos talking about the Life Force supplement products. Uh, again, full disclosure, while I'm a medical doctor, I'm not a practicing physician, and I am a co-founder of Life Force. Uh, and along with Tony Robbins, the author of this book, uh, Life Force, how new breakthroughs in precision medicine can transform the quality of our life and those you love. And coming out of this book, uh, Tony and I really wanted to create a set of products that would make it easy for people to benefit from uh, this incredible period of, of progress we're seeing in the biotech world. Uh, we turned to one particular uh, physician and scientist uh, to help us orchestrate this, and that's Dr. Hector Lopez. Um, by way of introduction, Dr. Lopez is Head Scientific and Innovation Advisor for LifeForce, Chief Medical Officer and Co-Founder of two groups, Center for Applied Health Sciences, and also Supplement Safety Solutions. Uh, he's the creator of a wide range of supplements and ingredients, working on this field for 15 to 20 years. Uh, Hector, a pleasure to have you back. Uh, and in this video, I want to talk about something that uh, a, a dear friend, Dr. David Sinclair, has popularized. Uh, the product is called NMN. So, Hector, good afternoon, first of all. Hey, good afternoon. How are you, Peter? Thanks. Uh, great to be on with you. Yeah, no, a, a pleasure and great to be on with you as well. So, um, you know, uh, Dr. David Sinclair, who heads genomics uh, at Harvard Medical School, uh, first read his book called Lifespan uh, years ago. I've had him on my webinars. Uh, he is uh, uh, involved with me in my, my venture fund, and I just love his work. And really, I credit him to a large degree uh, with popularizing the idea, not of just longevity or health span, but the idea of age reversal. Can we, in fact, slow, stop, or perhaps even reverse aging? And, uh, you know, he talks about in his uh, work the things that he's doing to remain young. And, and frankly, he looks 20 years younger than he, his, his chronological age. And one of the things he talked about in his book that he uh, gives credit to this and that his 80 plus year old dad is, is taking is NMN. Um, and uh, uh, so first of all, what is NMN? And then I wanna talk about uh, some of the work that you and Tony and I did, which is where the heck do you go buy it? Because if you look on the web, there's like a hundred different versions of NMN. Uh, and what is the good stuff? What is the bad stuff and why? So what is NMN first of all? Yeah, so, um, so Peak NMN was uh, a product that um, I felt we, we wanted to go as, as you can see is sort of a common motif with all of the Life Force products. We tend to go above and beyond um, the, the, the call of duty in terms of, um, you know, the problem to solve, uh, the need states, the features and benefits for consumers. So someone looking for NMN, we wanted to make sure that we're able to buttress NMN with some other unique molecules and compounds that um, could potentially amplify uh, NMN's ability to, uh, uh, not only to increase NAD status, but even go beyond that and add some other features by targeting some other biochemical and molecular pathways that we know are associated with um, with health span as geroprotectors in other animal models, as well as in some very early preclinical work in humans. So first of all, I mean, it, NMN is an acronym standing for nicotinamide mind mononucleotide. Right. So why is why is NMN uh, viable uh, in the body in the first place? Yeah. So it's a precursor, a uh, precursor to NAD, which is nicotina, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. But I think this is a good place to start uh, in terms of an NAD primer, uh, because we'll be able to actually see the NMN molecule here. And you'll be able to also see another common, commonly used precursor uh, in the field and in, in, um, in someone's goal to try to improve or increase their NAD status or the amount of NAD that they're uh, that they're able to produce or they're able to secure in their cells, in their body. Um, and so NAD, we start with NAD. It is one of the oldest molecules on earth. It's really central as a, um, really as a redox 
uh, coenzyme for being able to move electrons. So it's central to really almost all metabolism. Uh, over, well over 500 chemical reactions that are critical. Uh, without it, uh, you know, uh, life on Earth wouldn't exist. I think of it as the energy currency inside the cell, right? Yeah, essentially, right. Or at least it's it's part of the the battery that allows you, yep, to to, to get to that energy currency to get to ATP. Uh, yeah, without it, you couldn't make ATP, for example, right? Um, so, uh, it, but it also has another important function: is that NAD is used as a substrate, so it's actually consumed. So on the one hand, it's just used to pass along electrons in what we call oxidation reduction reactions, uh, like the electron transport chain, for example, in the mitochondria. You bring back high school memories of biology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and of course, that's critical to be able to convert uh, all the chemical energy and all that are stored in all the bonds of the food that we eat, uh, you know, the proteins, the carbohydrates and lipids and be able to get it all the way down through the, the Krebs cycle. And eventually we have to take all of those electrons from all those bonds that we've broken from all the nutrients we've consumed. We need to be able to find an effective way to deliver those into the mitochondria to then eventually carry those along the chain and make ATP as the end product along with water um, uh, because of uh, oxygen being the, the final hydrogen electron acceptor. Um, but uh, NMN, you can see here, is this molecule. So it's nicotinamide, which is this portion of the molecule, right, is nicotinamide. Mm -hmm. um, it, if you add a sugar to it called ribose, then you have NR, which is nicotinamide riboside. But you see the difference between NR and NMN? It's just one major difference. And that's this guy right here. And this is a phosphate group. So this is known in the biochemic in biochemistry, in the biochemical world, this is known as a nucleoside. Mm -hmm. And once you add a nucleoside is a base, which is this nicotinamide component or moiety here, this is the sugar together. It's a nucleoside. When you add the phosphate to it, it now becomes very charged as a molecule and it's now a nucleotide and nmn is essentially one step away from becoming nad which is ultimately what everyone is after when we're trying to improve cellular nad status so you could say nmn is a step closer than nr to nad now there's a lot of controversy still that, to be honest, hasn't completely been worked out um, about whether, you know, can NMN be, can, be, uh, uh, can, can there be cellular uptake of NMN? There's some speculation of some transporters, some SLC transporters that have been identified in some experimental models, but it hasn't really been duplicated or replicated by other groups. So there's still controversy over whether it exists or not. Um, same thing with NR, to be honest. Um, and the way I see it, the way me and my partners see it um, that are doing work in this area is we're kind of agnostic a little bit to your choice of um, uh, NAD precursor because you, your precursors could be NMN, it could be NR, it could just be this base here, just the nicotinamide, which is, which is found over here. Mm -hmm. The body has a way to take all of these molecules, no matter which ones they are, and that's the genius of the biochemical machinery in our body is, you know, NAD is so important <laughs> and so critical to life because the body has uh, numerous salvage pathways and enzymes to make NAD, whether you have NR in the cell, whether you have NMN in the cell, whether you have nicotinamide, or just straight up niacin, which really looks a lot like nicotinamide, except there's a, a hydrogen group uh, on there, it makes it an acidic, a little more acidic, but it's basically niacin and niacinamide are interchangeable. Let me, dig let me digress, digress one second about the importance of NAD in the cell. So one of the things that Dr. Sinclair wrote about is the notion that NAD plus, NAD is uh, used by the seven sirtuins 
uh, to do a number of things that are critical. Number one, it stabilizes your epigenome. So it's really uh, the sirtuins are making sure that the right genes are on and the right genes are off. What I tell people is, listen, you know, uh, end of the day, uh, when you're born at age zero, at age 40, at 60, 80, 100, you've got the same genes. So why do you look different? Why do you look different at birth or at 20? Why don't you look like you did when you were 18? And it's not the genes that you have, it's the epigenome, what genes are on and what genes are off. That's the difference as you're aging. And so making sure that your epigenome, that sirtuins are functioning properly is critically important, but the sirtuins have an additional function that's powered by NAD, which is DNA repair. And as you're getting older, your sirtuins that are powered by NAD are having to do more and more DNA repair because we're around smoke, we're around ionizing radiation, we're getting older. And so imagine that your sirtuins are spending more and more time repairing DNA and less and less time, uh, you know, sort of keeping the epigenome in place. And imagine if at the same time, your supply of NAD, which is powering the sirtuins, is dropping in your cells. And, and as you well know, uh, Hector, our NAD levels drop by more than 50% as we age. And this is the challenge. And so making sure that your sirtuins have all of the, you know, the food, the ingredients they need to, to operate a peak performance is, is critical, especially as we get older. Absolutely. And, that, and that's what with this next slide here talks about how pleiotropic NAD really is um, and, and how it can influence all those functions you mentioned, right? Everything from critical metabolic pathways, uh, being able to basically keep the lights on as energy currency to DNA repair, to epigenome stability and integrity, to chromatin remodeling, which is part of what happens when the epigenome either gets damaged um, or um, when it's functioning correctly, the chromatin is getting remodeled and the histones are getting mobilized in a way that opens up the DNA for certain genes to be, to your point, turned on when they need to be turned on for the type of cell it is and the function it's performing or when those genes need to be turned off or repressed and silenced. So the reason we take NMN is to increase our intracellular NAD levels, just to be extremely clear. So one of the things I want to I want to get to for a moment is, um, and we talk about this in our book Life Force, that when we looked at uh, NMN on the marketplace, and in fact you have labs that test products, right? So you bring all kinds of nutraceutical products in, and you test is what they say is in there there and is it active and is it safe and so forth can you talk one second about um uh the stability of nmn and also uh the you know what the different range of products are out there which is why we felt compelled to sort of create our own life force version of nmn yeah no that's a great point peter so nmn is a molecule um because you saw that it's got a phosphate group uh, it's also got that sugar. It can be cleaved uh, off. It can, it can become very unstable under certain conditions. So um, we made sure to scour um, really the earth in terms of uh, who has the most stable, reliable NMN as a source, as a, as a raw material that could be utilized for the peak um, NMN product for Life Force. And, and really what we found was a particular manufacturer that takes unique care at multiple crystallization steps to make sure that the pH is controlled, the temperature is controlled, and the moisture level is controlled. All three of those things or any of those three things can dramatically impact the degradation rate of NMN. And it's probably why so many products on the market uh, when they are tested independently through, you know, GC mass spec or HPLC mass spec, um, it's probably why so many fail uh, after very short periods of time of manufacture. The one that we utilize, for example, has um, third party independently verified 24 month stability um, 
And that's at, uh, at typical room temperatures, even a little beyond room temperature um, and ambient uh, moisture, as long as it's maintained within the bottle. So uh, that that's very impressive and uh, certainly bodes well for us having at least if you want reliable NMN that you know is going to test out every time batch to batch, that, that was important for us. Thank you for that. Yep. So some of the challenges, right, with using any of these precursors, we talked about it already, the, the stability, uh, reliability, but also the, uh, the oral bioavailability, potentially because of the size and the polarity of the molecule. Um, the fact that it, it may burden your methylation status a little bit. Uh, we do know that methyl groups are pulled and utilized in order for the body to handle uh, what comes after uh, NAD, after NAD is consumed and used by either sirtuins or some of those DNA repair uh, PARP enzymes that you talked about before. Um, uh, and then there's this other issue of dealing both offense and defensively to make sure that you can improve NAD status, right? So we want to play on both sides of the ball, if you will. Um, offensively, we know that's the easy thing to do is provide more precursor. But also uh, what we did is in combining Peak NMN with Peak HealthSpan, the other Life Force product, uh, what we're doing is increasing the enzymes that allow you to go from the raw material precursor of NMN or even niacin or niacinamide that you might have in your background diet and make sure that you can make more of the end product, more NAD. That's on the offensive side of the ball. On the defensive side of the ball, we wanted to use ingredients that could potentially modulate or limit the, con the overconsumption and depletion of NAD by some of these enzymes that are found on the outside, usually of white blood cells. So whenever there's a lot of inflammation, systemic inflammation, when there's you know metabolic damage or metabolic um, uh, sort of uh, the syndrome, uh, these enzymes uh, tend to get upregulated and they overconsume NAD. Uh, one of these is called CD38. Sure, sure. Uh, so here's a, a, a you know a nice uh, sort of metabolic map, if you will. Uh, of the pathways of how what the body does to to make NAD here in the center. Um, so you can see that there's this classic uh, sort of price handler uh, pathway where you can consume nicotinic acid or niacin. That's the flushing niacin that you can also supplement with or can be found in the diet. Um, that actually gets consumed and gets converted into uh, nicotinic acid mononucleotide. It's a similar version to NMN, but not quite NMN. Uh, and then it gets transformed into another secondary metabolite. And then finally, so you're talking about three enzymatic steps away from getting to NAD. Whereas if you consume NMN, this is what I, I think, you know, in talking to uh, Dr. Sinclair and David um, and, and, and hearing and seeing his, uh, his rationale, this is what he says, look, you're, you're only one step away, right? You only need to have this one enzyme act on NMN to get to your NAD end product. Um, and, and so this rationale is, it, it's sound. Um, the, the potential challenge there is that it's possible that the body and the, even the microbiome in the gut modifies this NMN and you kind of get back up here or back up here or you get here to nicotinamide, um, to nicotinamide. Either way, the, the nice thing about using NMN is you're going to find your way, you know, all roads lead to Rome. You're going to find <laughs> your way to NAD, right? Which is what we want. So we're going to still play offense regardless with NMN. I, I, am, I am curious, uh, how much of this is on faith and how much are we actually measuring intracellular increases in NAD levels? Right. I mean, the old adage around, uh, you know, you pee away most of your supplements. Um, any thoughts here or where the science is? Yeah, well, what's great about this is we have human clinical data. Now we're up to seven. There's seven human clinical trials that have been published already in the public domain on NMN supplementation in humans. Um, what they, in summary, what all of them have basically told us 
is you can reliably increase the amount of blood, whole blood NAD levels. So the amount of NAD you can measure in your blood in humans, and that's coming mostly from white blood cells in the blood. Um, you can increase it by 150 to 300 percent. Mm -hmm. So one and a half to threefold. Yeah. Uh, just by using 250 to 500 milligrams a day of of NMN. Amazing. Um, yeah. And, and what's nice is that's corroborated by other like almost uh, 15 to 20 studies by NR as well. So we know you can do it. And if you look back into the literature, of course, a lot of the, um, you know, NR manufacturers, et cetera, don't necessarily like that. But if you look at niacin and niacinamide in, in human models of mitochondrial myopathy, you can increase the amount of NAD in muscle, not just in blood, but in muscle of those uh, patients with mitochondrial myopathy that are starting off with very low levels in muscle because of um, uh, genetic disorders, they can actually end up increasing the amount of muscle levels by 500% with just a dose of 500 milligrams a day. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about playing offense and defense. This is not just an NMN product. Um, uh, those are available on the web, but you've added a couple of other components here, uh, which I was fascinated as to why. Uh, <laughs> yeah, take it away. Yeah, so here we have the Supplement Facts panel as just a quick reference guide on the right. So we, um, we did add berberine. Um, we added berberine because, look, berberine works through a very similar mechanism of action as metformin. Yes. And so we wanted to have at least a natural product alternative for uh, geroscience enthusiasts, geroprotective, um, someone looking for a geroprotective product to be able to get access to um, a, a natural product alternative. So berberine is there for all the things we already know it does. Uh, but even if you're not, even if you're still unsure about the longevity benefits, because ITPs fail to find uh, median or maximal lifespan extension, I believe, but there have been some other studies published where there have been life lifespan extensions in animal uh, longevity and lifespan increases with berberine. Uh, I'm sorry, with metformin. What we know is berberine has human clinical data that even at these doses, at the dose we include here, you can improve glycemic control. So you can improve how your body handles carbohydrates when you do consume them. Uh, and insulin sensitivity at both the liver and the muscle, which are very important. Um, so we have berberine here for that reason. The other one that I think is kind of a, a pretty sophisticated way that we were all able to get around um, the, the, the ITPs found that a carbose, uh, which is a drug that was FDA approved for uh, uh, type 2 diabetics and pre-diabetics um, for what it does is it's an en it's an inhibitor of the alpha amylase enzyme it's basically the enzyme found in both saliva and in the gut that breaks down starch right it's kind of like a starch blocker right um, the issue with a carbose is that at high doses as you can imagine if you don't break down starch in the upper part of the gut and it gets to the distal part of the gut, you know, you can get some, some GI discomfort, some bloating, some gas, et cetera, um, and some loose stools. Uh, there's a natural product alternative called Reducos, which has been studied in humans. And you can see these curves here on, on the graph is this is the placebo group in red. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the change in uh, blood glucose levels on the left in uh, millimoles per liter. This is uh, how much time from the uh, time of consumption of the uh, both the product, the uh, supplement, and a glucose load of 75 grams. And this is also the change in insulin on the right. So you can see that both the insulin response and the glycemic response has been blunted. So the, you're blunting the excursion, that big spike in both insulin and glucose, which is part of the reason that the researchers speculate a carbose was able to expand the lifespan by up to 22% in uh, male mice and about 5% in female mice, um, which is not uncommon to get uh, differences in males and, and females uh, 
um, in median lifespan. Uh, part of it is being able to keep that glycemic excursion in a very tight, narrow range. So we're able to essentially um, mimic that using this natural product alternative. It's an extract from white mulberry leaves uh, called reducos. So we have that in there. The other ingredient that we're able to sneak into the, you know, sort of uh, the NMN. I was surprised to find this ingredient there. And, you know, spermidine has gotten a incredible revival as a pro longevity uh, molecule here. So it was like, yes, okay, I'm super excited that's there. Yeah, and you know, Peter, we're excited about spermidine too, so much so that we're actually running some uh, uh, trials and uh, preclinical models combining NAD3 with spermidine to see if there's some added benefit. We're also adding uh, spermine as well into that as a complex. So we'll see what the results of that uh, are in the, in the near future. But what, what we did here is, yeah, we're essentially using NMN as a Trojan horse, let's face it, right? Um, and we're able to sneak in some spermidine in here as well. Spermidine is uh, one of those polyamines. You can see it's polyamine because it has three amine groups here, one, two, three. Yep. on the molecule and polyamines do a lot of things um you know they're important in uh, dna repair they're important in dna replication cell cycle replication and maintenance uh they're also uh one of the mechanisms is we find it here there's a nice big slide on me multiple mechanisms is autophagy so it actually helps to um uh in inhibit mTOR uh, a little bit, and it increases AMPK activation to uh, amplify autophagy signaling. Uh, it also helps with increasing potentially what we what we call um, protein translation in uh, fidelity. Uh, there's an area in geroscience in, in the pharma space where they're exploring what happens when you slow down the translation of mRNA to protein in the cell is you you create less errors because there's a certain you know uh, accepted error rate in that in that translation and when you slow it down you're able to potentially decrease the amount of proteins that are translated aberrantly um, to increase the quality of protein translation um, and it's also potentially helping with apoptosis uh, in program cell death um, uh, just making sure that it, that it regulates the way that a cell behaves generally. So we're excited about spermidine. Um, and there's also human data, which I think has flown under the radar. Everyone thinks, oh, spermidine is, it's only been studied in, you know, in, in fly, in fruit flies and worms, C. elegans and yeast, et cetera, and in vitro. But no, there's actually data in um, in humans, um, uh, Peckard et al. in 2020 published an N of 85 study. Granted, there was no placebo control, but there was a randomization into 1.9 milligrams or 3.3 milligrams. And these were in 60 to 96 year olds that already had some mild dementia um, the, um, uh, uh, diagnosis. And it actually increased verbal fluency, verbal fluidity. Um, and um, uh, uh, phonemic and phenomatic uh, fluidity as well. So uh, I, I think there's, there's some exciting work that's still ahead of spermidine and where it's going. I think it's gonna, it's gonna see a pretty interesting run um, is, is what, what I predict at least in the next few years. Agreed. And so I think we'll, we'll end with this, uh, Peter, is basically, uh, I think by now uh, your listeners has probably seen well it seems pretty clear that peak health span and peak NMN, not only were they formulated to be companion ingredients, but they sort of amplify each other in multiple ways. So it's really not just like a jab, right cross. It's almost like a uh -huh. left hook, right cross, you know? Um, I think they're, they're both very powerful. Um, they both support the uh, increase in NAD status in your cells, if, if people are interested in that. Um, and we're trying to fill the gaps and any of the limitations as well. We're trying to address any of the limitations currently based on what we know in the latest state of the science. We're trying to create a, a, a signature um, that mimics um, healthy lifespan promoting activities with this combination. And 
I think I think we've done a pretty good job at that. So um, I think we'll we'll leave it at that. Um, Fantastic. Just a, a few last questions on the yeah. uh, on the Peak NMN product. Um, uh, again, uh, your numbers are based on three capsules a day. Um, how do you recommend? Is this something that a person can start with three? Uh, and then is what's the best time of day to take this? Do you take it with food? Yeah, that's a great question. This one, I do recommend that we, you break up those three capsules. So you can start with three capsules, but I recommend breaking them up more in the PM side of your day. So as opposed to the beginning where you're, you've already bookended that um, and the mid middle of the day to the, to the end of your day. So you could do two capsules with your largest meal, for example. It's a good idea because you're able to decrease that normal uh, excursion or that spike in in insulin and uh, and glycemia that you're normally going to expect after a large meal. Uh, and then maybe one more capsule as well, whether that be at lunch or dinner. Fantastic. So we've covered in the last three videos, peak rise, uh, sort of uh, engage your brain, win the morning, win the day, uh, peak health span, and now peak NMN. Uh, and, you know, for me, I, I really wanted to have these conversations with you uh, so people could understand why there are numer you know, numeral compo numerous components here and how they play together and the logic and thinking of, of, what, you've, uh, of what you've created and structured here. As always, uh, Dr. Lopez, a pleasure. Thank you for your brilliance. Um, and again, you know, full disclosure, you know, both uh, Hector and I are in, involved in, uh, in Life Force uh, because we believe in it. And hopefully this uh, gives you uh, some structured thinking about the supplements you're taking. Uh, if you're interested in increasing your vitality and increasing your longevity. And again, for me, this is the most extraordinary time ever to be alive. And I want to see every second that I possibly can. Uh, Hector, a pleasure, my friend. Thank you for your time, for your brilliance. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Peter. It was great. Thanks.